You remember this, right? Beyblade, Beyblade, let it rip. Beyblade was crazy because you had whole schools of muff pulling up with stadiums and spinning tops, screaming Pegasus at the top of their lungs, pouring their heart and soul into the Beyblade like it was gonna change anything. Shit, I was one of them, had my cyber Pegasus and we were running full scale money matches like it was really that serious. You win a couple of matches and boom, you can get some snacks for the day. And in elementary and middle school, snacks were power, snacks were status. But Beyblade was even crazier than you remember. I mean, you had Moses parting the Red Seas with the Beyblade. I knew they got grimy in the Bible, but that I have a fellow converting religions for real. So I want to take a look back at some of the craziest moments in the entire show, starting with a small one. We got to get this out of the way. The Bladers were terrorists. The Beyblades aren't just spinning top toys in this universe, they're weapons of mass destruction. Don't believe me? Kiyoya was one of the main rivals of the Beyblade Metal series. Imagine Vegeta, yeah, yeah, that's pretty much it. Starts as a bad guy, works under an evil organization for a little bit, but eventually breaks free and becomes a good guy, chasing after Jenga's power for the rest of the show. But then we get to the tournament arc. And by now, Kiyoya is known in these streets. You got fellas running up on Buddy, trying to jump him 1v3, and he's still winning. That very same day, he's out for a leisurely stroll. You know how it is, just chilling, when another blader tries to snipe him across the map with a 50 cal with variable zoom on it. And bro only missed because he ain't account for bullet drop off properly. You think if this metal toy hits you in the head, you ain't taking damage? Come on, bro, they putting hits out on people in this show. What's crazier is this is not even the first or only time something like this happens. In the OG Beyblade, you got this Nigel Thornberry ass boy pulling out his legendary bolt action aiming straight for Tyson's dome top. Cops pulling up on the goat who we definitely not ready to talk about him yet. Like he got five stars whipping their launchers out with switches like a red dot on them. 10-4, I'm about to bust a cap in his ass. You got the evil organizations calling in Beyblade AC-130 killstreaks, dropping them out the sky to ambush the protagonist. Like, what's really going on in this show? And that's only barely scratching the surface of the hate crimes these fellows are committing on a daily basis. Ah, uh, what a beautiful morning. The birds are chirping, the wind is blowing. Another day, another dollar. Am I right, Carol? Carol? What the fuck was that? A terrorist attack? Nah, nah, it's the Bladers, again! Mr. President, a second Beyblade has struck the building. Look at him, sprinting through town, blowing up cars and jumping out of office windows. You can't go to work in this city. Did he just, did he just summon the gates of hell in the middle of downtown? Look at that innocent guy right there, he's cooked! How did we not notice how insane this was when we were kids? Why are they even allowed to have these? We need to talk. Who decided these preteens should be allowed to have possession of these weapons? Where are their parents? Like, we got a sneak peek at the capability of some of these Beyblades earlier, but sniper rifles, attack helicopters, and even opening the gates of hell are nothing compared to their true potential. Don't get me wrong, they can use it to do good sometimes. Sometimes. An asteroid is barreling towards Earth about to wipe us all out. It's the end of days as we know it. Who we gonna call? The government? NASA? No! Get the teens with the spinning top toys in a spacecraft ASAP. Jingo will take care of it. He got you. But most of the time, it's just heinous, unnecessary shit. Kiyoya's Beyblade was basically store-bought and he can summon natural disasters with it. I'm sorry, but we need to have license and registration to purchase these things. At least I can see why a tornado would be useful in a Beyblade battle. What's the point of this? Like is bro Gojo? What purpose would Infinite Void even serve in a fidget spinner battle? You might remember this Guardian of the Ruins, Dynamis from Metal Fury. Does he A battle like a normal blader? B summon the powers of Zeus from the skies to smite the bladers down like the heathens they are? Or C drop a nuke on the entire area? If you guessed Zeus, good job, here's a cookie. But why does he summon Zeus? Why? Because fuck him, that's why. The nuke wasn't a joke either, by the way. That's also something that seriously happens in this show. But the worst of it all is the bladers aren't just dangerous to society. No, 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 no. They're dangerous to themselves. I don't even remember who this guy is, but lose one Beyblade battle, his bay takes a little chip on the side, and he's collapsing hands and knees on the floor having a full mental breakdown. Subasa loses one Beyblade match and he's in the hospital the next day fighting for his life with schizophrenia. Seeing images of himself in the mirror, like how do you get this much PTSD from a Beyblade? You would think bro just got back from 
Dom with the way he's acted. This was a regular occurrence in this show. The Beyblades were doing fucked up things to these kids. It did like 20 times more damage than vaping ever could have dreamed of to our generation. I don't know why the parents didn't step in or why they were even allowed to purchase these vile weapons. All I know is that all of these kids need therapy. Most of them deserve to be locked up. Put them in juvie, I don't care, but there's one man that's beyond saving. One man who kneeled to no one. One man where you knew exactly what time it is when he showed up on screen. Havoc last night here in- And they're not human, they're 100 Dragon sightings. Evil manipulative man. Unidentified. Hundreds of teeth. This team take over this time and my kids are getting slaughtered. This fucker- Kenny is dead. Ryuga, the Dragon Emperor. This man solos 80% of any manga with a toy you can get at Target. You can't make a Beyblade video without talking about him. Remember the buddies with the red dots from earlier? Ryuga just whoop, casually tosses his Beyblade and takes him out. Subasa's PTSD and schizophrenia? Ryuga caused that and he's the one who had to come back and tell him how to get over it. Like how's your abuser gonna be the one that ends up helping you get over the abuse? This man was the epitome of Black Air Force energy. He's out here training in volcanoes and having other characters fight for their life just to compete with them. Most of the crazy moments in Beyblade we talked about earlier seeped back to the darkest corners of my mind, but I vividly remember watching Ryuga charge up a Kamiyamiha. The arena scatters the area and just listen to this girl scream. Oh yeah, she's dead now. Ryuga is what made you realize, oh, this shit was actually that serious. He kinda carried the show for me, to be honest. Every moment he graced us with his presence on screen, your eyes were glued to it. You couldn't look away. Ryuga commanded attention, and as the series went on, my respect only grew for him more. Metal Masters is where you realize Ryuga wasn't just some mindless villain on an endless quest for power. He outworked you, he cared more than you did, he had more heart than you, and then he was gonna show up and beat your ass and take your Beyblade too. Taking charge of being the one to train up Kenta and take him from being the whiny little kid that he was to the point where he could actually realize his potential? It was Ryuga who did that, not Jenga. Staying true to his word and not taking shit from anyone, escalating to the point where he's going blow for blow 1v1 with the literal god, and somehow still standing his own ground, until eventually he falls. He loses and dies. Ryuga dies. Rewatching this scene is where I remembered the profound impact this moment had on me as a kid. The impact the entire show had. Yeah, Beyblade is crazy. It's crazy to the point of being stupid sometimes, but that craziness was probably part of what got us so hooked in the first place. What had us screeching, Pegasus! From the deepest depths of your soul in the cafeteria. When you were watching it as a kid, you didn't stop and think, hey, that's not realistic, or these kids need to be locked up. You just enjoyed it, and I think there's something special about that perspective. About being able to take so much joy in something so simple and dumb. Just a couple of well-designed kids' toys and a TV show inspired an entire generation to pull up and play in real life, to run it up on BeybladeBattles.com online. I remember people banning me from using Meteor L Drag on our games because it was just as broken in real life as it was in the show. Those were good times. Those were insane times. Those were cringe times. But I wouldn't trade it for anything.